Hello, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course of Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to read from chapter 19, The Attainment of Peace. Now, last week when I read, I discovered that I'm much happier if I read a shorter uh, portion of each chapter than trying to read the whole chapter or uh, even half a chapter. So I'm going to read this first section and we'll see, maybe I'll read the second section too, or, and actually we are reading the second section. Maybe I'll read the third section and maybe not. Maybe I'll just stop when I finish this first um, reading here. So we are on chapter 19, the attainment of peace. And section two is sin versus error. It is essential that error not be confused with sin. And it is this distinction that makes salvation possible. For error can be corrected and the wrong made right. But sin, were it possible, would be irreversible. The belief in sin is necessarily based on the firm conviction that minds, not bodies, can attack. And thus the mind is guilty and will forever remain so unless a mind not part of it, can give it absolution. Sin calls for punishment as error for correction, and the belief that punishment is correction is clearly insane. Sin is not an error, for sin entails an arrogance which the idea of error lacks. To sin would be to violate reality and to succeed. Sin is the proclamation that attack is real and guilt is justified. It assumes the Son of God is guilty and thus, and has thus succeeded in losing his innocence and making himself what God created not. Thus is creation seen as not eternal and the will of God open to opposition and defeat. Sin is the grand illusion underlying all the ego's grandiosity. For by it, God himself is changed and rendered incomplete. The son of God can be mistaken. He can deceive himself. He can even turn the power of his mind against himself, but he cannot sin. There is nothing he can do that would really change his reality in any way, nor make him really guilty. That is what sin would do, for such is its purpose. Yet for all the wild insanity inherent in the whole idea of sin, it is impossible. For the wages of sin is death, and how can the immortal die? A major tenant is the ego's insane religion is that sin is not error but truth, and it is innocence that would deceive. Purity is seen as arrogance, and the acceptance of the self as sinful is perceived as holiness. And it is this doctrine that replaces the reality of the Son of God as his Father created him and willed him to be forever. Is this humility? Or is it rather an attempt to wrest creation away from truth and keep it separate? Any attempt to reinterpret sin as error is always indefensible to the ego. The idea of sin is wholly sacrosanct to its thought system and quite unapproachable except with reverence and awe. It is the most holy concept in the ego's system, lovely and powerful, wholly true, and necessarily protected with every defense at its disposal. For here lies its best defense, which all others serve. Here is its armor, its protection, and the fundamental purpose of the special relationship in its interpretation. It can indeed be said the ego made its world on sin. Only in such a world could everything be upside down. 
This is the strange illusion that makes the clouds of guilt seem heavy and impenetrable. The solidness that this world's foundation seems to have found in this. Yeah. For sun, for, I'm sorry, for sin has changed creation from an idea of God to an ideal the ego wants. A world it rules, made up of bodies, mindless and capable of complete corruption and decay. If this is a mistake, it can be undone easily by truth. Any mistake can be corrected if truth be left to judge it. But if the mistake is given the status of truth, to what can it be brought? The holiness of sin is kept in place by just this strange device. As truth is, I'm sorry, as truth it is inviolate, and everything is brought to it for judgment. As a mistake, it must be brought to truth. It is impossible to have faith in sin, for sin is faithlessness. Yet it is possible to have faith that a mistake can be corrected. There is no stone at all, the ego's embattled citadel, that is more heavily defended than the idea that sin is real, the natural expression of what the Son of God has made himself to be and what he is. To the ego, this is no mistake, for this is reality. This is the truth from which escape will always be impossible. This is his past, his present, and his future for he has somehow managed to corrupt his father and change his mind completely. Mourn then the death of God, whom sin has killed. And this would be the ego's wish, which in its madness it believes it has accomplished. Would you not rather that all this be nothing more than a mistake, entirely correctable and so easily escaped from that its whole correction is like walking through a mist into the sun, for that is all it is. Perhaps you would be tempted to agree with that ego that it is far better to be sinful than mistaken. Yet think you carefully before you allow yourself to make this choice. Approach it not lightly, for it is the choice of hell or heaven. And I am going to stop uh, with this reading and let that sink in. Uh, <clears throat> let me give a little of my own interpretation to maybe help uh, get this knowledge rooted in your mind. You are divinity in form. God is in you. There is no separation. You are not some body other than God. And so if everyone is divinity in form, God does not sin. God is not evil. In our human bodies, we may make mistakes. These are not unforgivable because they are all mistakes being made through divinity. So there is no sin here. There's nothing wrong here. This is all just an experience for us to have and hopefully enjoy, but there's no sin here. There's nothing wrong here. So I hope this uh, lesson is uh, helpful and um, I will see you here next Sunday for the next installment. I'm feeling much better about the Sunday readings, just uh, taking them into much smaller chunks. So I hope that's gonna work for you. Um, and then of course, there are the daily lessons that we work through every day. So uh, until either tomorrow or next Sunday, namaste and much love.